Antonius. I would rather entreat thy company to see the wonders of the world abroad. But since thou lovest, love still thy fair end, even as I would when I to love begin. My father at the road expects my coming there to see me shift. And thither will I bring thee, Valentine. Sweet Rodius, <laughs> no. Now let us take our leave. Let me hear from thy success, as of letters of thy success in love. And all happiness but chance to thee in Milan. As much to you as home, and so farewell. Be <laughs> after honor hunts, I after love. Thou, Julia, thou hast metamorphosed me. Sir Proteus, save you. So you are master? But now he parted hence to embark for Milan. Gavest thou my letter to Julia? Aye, we gave your letter to her, and she gave us nothing for our labor. But what said she? Aye. Come, come, what said she? Open your purse, that the money and the matter may be both at once delivered. Well, <laughs> here is for your pains. What said she? Truly, sir, I think you'll hardly win her. Why couldst thou perceive so much from her? Sir, I could perceive nothing at all from her. No, give her no token but stones. She's as hard as Theo. <laughs> what said she? Nothing? No, not so much as take this for thy pains. Henceforth, carry your letters yourself. We'll commend you to our master. Go, go, be gone. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. 
bed. Show lodge me till my wound be thoroughly healed. Oh, be good, calm wind, blow not the word away till I have found each letter in the letter. Lo, in one line, his name twice writ. Poor forlorn Proteus, passionate Proteus, that I search with a sovereign kiss to the sweet Julia that I'll tear away, that I will not, as it sits so prettily to his complaining names. Thus I shall fold one on another. No kiss to embrace content if he will. Madam! <laughs> Dinner is ready and your father stays. Well, let us go. <laughs> what, shall these papers lie like telltales here? If you respect them, best take them up. <laughs> come, come, let us go. Right. 
That's because I have a short breath. dog that lives. <laughs> my mother weeping, my father wailing, our maid howling, my sister crying, our cat wringing her hands, and all our house in a great perplexity, yet did not this cruel-hearted cur shed one tear. He is a stone, a very pebble stone, and has no other than a dog. Welcome, Grandma. Send him hither. This is the 
gentleman that I told your ladyship had come along with me, but that his mistress did hold his eyes locked in her crystal looks. They say that love hath not an eye at all. To see such lovers, Thurio, as yourself upon the homely object love can win. Have done, have done. Here comes the middle Welcome, dear Proteus. <laughs> <laughs> and be my fellow servant of your ladyship. that says so much yourself. That you are welcome. That you are worthless. Well, my lord, your father would speak with you. I wait upon his pleasure. But we'll both attend to find your ladyship. <laughs> now tell me, how do you all for much you came? Your friends are well and have much commended. And how do yours? I left them all in hell. How does your lady and how fights your love? My tales of love are won't be wear you. I know you join not in the discourse of love. I for you. But thou let this alter now. I have done penance for your contending love. Oh, my dear Proteus, love's a mighty lord, and hath so humbled me, as I confess, there be no discourse except it be to love. Would well, this be out of your worship, so? Even she and is she not a heavenly saint? No, but she is an <coughs> earthly paragon. <laughs> I am we betrothed, nay more, marriage hour, with all the cunning manner of all or flight. Ah, lying. Determined of how I must climb her window. Determined of how I must climb at her window. A ladder made of cords, and all the means of plot and greed on my happiness. Good Proteus, go with me to the chamber, and ease the fearless to seek aid with thy counsel. Go on before, and I shall inquire you forth. I must under the robe to disembark some necessaries I needs must use, and then I'll presently attend you. Will you make haste? I will. One heat another heat expels, so the remembrance of my former love is by a newer object quite forgotten. At first I did adore a twinkling star, but now I worship a celestial sun. I will forget Julia is alive, and Valentine I'll hold an enemy. For this night he meaneth with a corded ladder to climb celestial Sylvia's chamber window. Myself and counsel his competitor. Now I'll presently give her father notice of their disguising and pretended flight, who all in rage will banish Valentine. For Thurio he intends shall wed his daughter, but Valentine being gone, I'll quickly cross by some sly trick, blunt Thurio's dull proceedings. Love, lend me wings to make my purpose swift, as thou hast lent me wit to plot this drift. <laughs> Lord, do it so cunningly that my discovery be not aimed at. Upon my honor, you 
no, 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 I can give this. Do my Lord's around time for me. Surround that floor! Was there a way so fast? How about your grace? There is a lady in Verona here, whom I fed, but she's kept her resort in and no man I'm back to the fight day her. Why then? I will reserve to her by night. Aye, but the door be locked. And sure it's her window. Her chamber is locked far from the ground. Why then? A wolf, a lion made of poison, would serve to scare us out. Fine? It binds me where I may have such a ladder. It binds me where I may have such a ladder. Where would you use it? Pray, sir, tell me that. This very night. By seven o'clock, I'll get you such a ladder. How shall I best convey the ladder thither? I need both gifts of any length. Fine? Then let me see thy clothes. Then let me see thy clothes. What's here? A Sicilian? Uh oh. <laughs> Silly this night, I want to franchise tea. Tis stolen, here's a lot of fertile purpose. Go, my sister, over when it's late. What life is life if Sylvia be not seen? What joy is joy if Sylvia be not by? Jerry, I hear, I but the tender of my death. Fly away, I hence, fly away from life. For then she need not be washed or scoured. I am. She is not to be kissed fasting in respect of her breath. Th that ball may be mended with the breakfast. Read on. Rejoice in the girl's correction. Her, Daryl, fear not that she will love you now, bound and banished from her sight. This is Exxon. She ain't up this 
despise me most? A little time will melt her frozen dot. How many else are proud of Is it a cranky ring gone? Gone, my good lord. Mine. My daughter takes this going grievously. My daughter takes this going grievously. A little time, my lord, will kill that freak. What might we do to make this girl forget the love of Valentine loves her too? The best way is to slander Valentine. Aye, but to know his spoken hate. Aye, if his enemy deliver it. Therefore, with circumstances, it must be delivered by someone she esteemed his friend. Mine, then you must undertake the slander. Then you must undertake the slander. You have prevailed. If I can do it, she will not long continue love to him. But to say this weeder love from Valentine, it follows not unto Sir Thurio. Therefore, as you unwind her love from him, you must provide to bottom it on me, which must be done by praising me as much as you in worth dispraise Sir Valentine. As much as I can do, I will effect. <laughs> you, Sir Thurio, must tangle her desires. Visit by night your lady's chamber window with some sweet concert. This or else nothing will inherit. <laughs> and that advice this night I'll put in practice. About it, gentlemen. Another standing back to the passenger. It took me ten shaking up a thought. My friend! That is not so, sir. We are your enemies. Peace! We'll hear him. Aye, we will. Then know I have little wealth to lose. What the trouble are you? Chocorona. Whence came you? From the line. Have you long sojourned there? Some sixteen months might have longer stayed if crooked fortune had thwarted me. Well, I deserve the word. Master, be one of them. Tis an honorable kind of thievery. Peace. Nothing but my fortune. Know then that some of us are gentlemen. Myself was from Verona banished for practicing the old way of lady. And I have a mental I, for a gentleman. I sat on the heart. <laughs> and I have such pretty crowns as these. But to the purpose, are you content to be our general and live as we do in this wilderness? What I say, thou? Fool do the armies. Be ruled by thee. Love thee as our commander and king. But if thou score our courtesy, that place! I will take the offer to live with you, provided that you do no outrages on silly women or for passengers. No, we detest this foul base practices. Come, go with us. We'll show thee all the treasures we have got, which with ourselves will arrest the dad's foes. Give me love. to be by myself in the evening breeze. 
my own love to prefer, but Sylvia is too true, too fair, too holy to be corrupted by my worthless gifts. Yet spaniel-like, the more she spurns my love, the more it grow and fawneth on her still. But here comes Thurio. Now we bust her a window to provide some evening music to her ear. Now, gentlemen, let's tune <coughs> and to it lustily a while. Now, my young guest, methinks you're melancholy. I pray you, why is it? Marry mine, Maisie, for I cannot be married. Come, I'll have you marry. I'll give you to hear music and see the gentleman that you asked for. Shall I hear him speak? I beg you to music. Uh -huh. been there. Bless the mark, a pissing while, and all the chamber smelt him. 
I had been acquainted with the smell before and knew it was crap, and goes me to the fellow who whips the dogs. Friend, quoth I, "'Twas I who did the thing you wot of. He makes me no more do, but whips me out of the chamber. How many masters would do this for her servant? Nay, I'll be sworn. I have stood in the pillory for geese he hath killed. Otherwise, he have suffered for it. I remember the trick you served me when I took my leave of Madame Sylvia. Did not I bid thee still mark me and do as I do? When didst thou see me heave up my leg and make water against a gentlewoman's farming? Did thou ever see me do such a trick? <laughs> Sir, I carried Mr. Sylvia the dog you bade me. And what says she to my little jewel? Mary, sir, she says your dog was a cur. <gasps> but she received my dog. No, indeed, did she not. You <laughs> have brought him back again. <laughs> Discourse. Ill when you talk of war. But well when I discourse of love and peace. 
Mr. Shear, here comes the view. How now, Sir Proteus? How now, Sir Terrio? Saw you, my daughter? Nora. Nora. Why did she fled into a peasant fountain? Egomar's in her company. This back to the gentleman, follow me. Why, this it is to be a pavish girl that flies her fortune when it follows her. Uh, I'll have to, and I will follow. And I will follow. Come, come, be patient. We must bring you to our captain. Come, bring her away. Where is the girl I was with her? She's being in this footage. She has our runner. Go thou with her to the west end of the wood where the sink is as he said. She cannot escape. Come, we must bring you to our captain's cave. Oh, Valentine, this I endure for thee. Here can I sit alone to my distresses and record my woes. Withdraw thee, Valentine. Who just comes here? Madam, this service I have done for thee, to has revived and rescued you from him. That would have forced your honor and your love. How like a dream is this I see in here? Oh, miserable, unhappy that I am. Unhappy were you, madam, here I came, but by my coming I have made you happy. Now approach thou makest me most unhappy. <laughs> Had I been seized by a hungry lion, I would have been breakfast to the beast, rather than have false Proteus rescue me. I do detest false perjured Proteus, therefore be gone, solicit me no more. Oh, tis the curse in love and still approved, when women cannot love where they're beloved. When Proteus cannot love where he's beloved, thou counterfeit to thy true friend. Nay, if the gentle spirit of moving words can in no way change you to a milder form, I'll woo you like a soldier. Oh, heaven! Buffy, let go! Valentine! Thou coming friend, of time most accursed. Amongst all foes, our friends should be the worst. My shame and guilt confounds me. Now I am paid. Oh, Nina, look at me! Look to the boy. How now? What's the matter? How am I to go up, sir? I'm sorry. This ring was never delivered to Madame Sylvia. Let me see. Why, this is the ring I gave unto Julia. thou by this ring. At my depart I gave this unto Julia. Julia herself can give it to me. How? Oh. Julia! My mind all over, uh, sir. Oh, heaven. Come, <laughs> <laughs> come. Come, come. I have a mic. To a pity two such friends should be long foes. Bear witness, heaven, I have my wish forever. And I mine. Surprise, surprise, surprise! I say, it is my lord, the duke. Sir Valentine? Yonder is Sylvia, and Sylvia's mine. Thurio, get back, or else embrace thy death. I dare thee but to breathe upon my love. Sir Valentine, I care not for her. I hold him but a fool that will endanger his body for a girl that loves him not. I claim her not, and therefore she is thine. Hey there, cowboy. Now, my young friend, and take thou for thy Sylvia how she has deserved you. I thank your grace. The gift hath made me happy. I now beseech you for your daughter's sake to grant one boon I shall ask of you. I grant it for thine own, whatever it be. These banished men that I have kept withal are men endued with worthy qualities. Forgive them what they have committed here. They are fit, they are reformed and fit for great employment. I pardon him indeed. <laughs> what made you at this page, my lord? I think the boy of grace in him be blushes. I warned you, worthy lord, more grace than boy. What mean you by that saying? Please you, I'll tell you as we pass along. Come, Proteus, tis your penance, but to hear the store voice of your love discovered. That done, our dear marriage shall be yours. One feast. My house, my future, happy day. <laughs> <laughs>